Hi, I'm Rhett Kelly. I've been making whips now for about 20 years, going on 20 years. And I started making them when I was about 13 years old. I was living on my great grandfather's ranch in central Florida. And uh, I got in a whip and I learned how to crack it. And I got really intrigued by the way it was, you know, the way the plants looked. I wanted to know how that was done. Um, and from there, my, my grandfather uh, got me connected up with the, with the fellow who made my whip. And his, his name's Richard Clark. And uh, he showed me a four plat and uh, gave me a piece of paper with some instructions written on about where to drip and make my drops and things like that. And from there I practiced with a 6, 8, 10, and 12 plat. And um, before long I was making cow whips. Um, about 10 years ago I uh, got, a, uh, got on the internet, got a computer. I just had a hunch that if I got online I could sell my, uh, my whips and uh, I made a few connections. And uh, before long I had more, more orders than I knew what to do with. And uh, so that was a real blessing, and uh, I really I thought I really thank the Lord for that. Um, and uh, it was it's just been a, a great blessing to uh, to to use uh, you know this this talent to to promote the Florida cow whip and, and whip making in general. And um, this particular whip I'm holding is the whip that we're going to be making in the DVD. Um, actually, this is the one you're going to see me make: uh, zebra wood handle, uh, black and tan thong, six feet long. And uh, before we get into that, I want to talk a little bit about the history of uh, cattle ranching in Florida and the Florida cow whip. Now one thing you've got to know about the Florida cow whip and about people from Florida who are involved in, in the cattle industry is this. Is we're very proud of our heritage. Um, I live in Georgia now, but I'll always be a Florida cracker at, uh, at heart. And uh, don't worry, you call me a cracker. That's fine. That's a, where I come from. That's a, uh, that's a compliment. Just means you're a Florida cracker, Florida native. And uh, particularly among cow people, we, we don't mind being called a cracker one bit. The Florida cow whip, when I got online 10 years ago, was, was not really well known uh, among the whip cracking community. Uh, nylon was generally frowned upon uh, as, a, as a whip making material. I can remember some rather derogatory remarks uh, made toward me in the past about it. And uh, nowadays, I see leather whip makers uh, making nylon whips, and I think that uh, shows a real uh, a change of attitude about nylon in general. And one great thing that I've seen now is that the Florida cow whip is now being used all over the world and actually being made uh, by whip makers all over the world. I'm sure that and, and hopeful that this DVD will will promote that even further. One thing very uh, quick, like. Florida cow whip has a very unique design. It is attached differently than most any other whip through the end of the handle here. It's drilled out. There's either one or two holes drilled through the side. It's connected with two uh, laces here as a keeper. The, uh, the end of the whip has a tapering twist type design to it. It's uh, sometimes uh, mistakenly uh, called a twisted fall. It's not a fall uh, in any sense of the, of the word but uh, that was an unfortunate misnomer that was uh, attached to it uh, early on when I, when I got onto the internet and started selling my whips. Even for a time I went along with it, but uh, it just made more things confusing uh, for people who were buying my whips. So I got away from that and, and began using the, the term that I, I grew up hearing was the, the tapered twist or, or just the twisted tail is what we called it. Uh, I modified the whip from this, this part would, you, would usually be the cracker but I modified that and turned that into a fall and then a t uh, attached twisted poppers to the end of it, which really seemed to be a, a, an improvement. Uh, one of the very first nylon whips that ever was used on my great-grandfather's ranch or ball was this one right here. Uh, it had a hand-carved handle. The uh, attachment was a little different. Uh, used to have the price tag on it. It was originally $10 a foot back in the 70s. That was quite a bit of money back then. It, too, had the tapered twist. Um, design. This whip here my grandfather gave me a couple years ago. It's going to remain in my collection. Um, now the Florida cow whip was uh, made of nylon. That replaced the uh, deer leather or buckskin whips that the people and the cowmen down there used for years. Um, the, uh, the, the elements and the, the climate was particularly rough on leather. And so the Florida cattlemen were very innovative and uh, ahead of their time in that in the 70s when nylon came around, they embraced it. This new technology, they didn't run from it. They embraced it. They used it. They, um, they began to make their whips out of it. And right now, nylon 
uh, is is for going on three decades uh, as the, the the material of choice of the Florida cattlemen. Um, so I mean, Florida cowmen were ahead of their times when it came to uh, you know embracing this uh, space age material. Uh, a great source of information about the state of Florida and its history, and particularly in the cattle industry, is this book right here. It's called Florida Cowmen: A History of the Florida Cattle. Of, uh, I'm sorry, A History of Florida Cattle Raising by Mr. Joe A. Ackerman Jr. Uh, Mr. Ackerman is the is the man who sketched the drawing, which is the cover art for the DVD. Um, I was, uh, uh, his son Mark uh, allowed me to use that for my DVD. I'm in, I'm in, uh, grateful and indebted to them for that. This is the book to have on Florida uh, history. People don't know this, but Florida has had cows uh, going on five centuries. Uh, before the West was ever wild, Florida had, a, had, had cattle, had cowboys. Uh, the first skirmish between cowboys and Indians was actually in Florida in the 1600s between Spanish cowboys and the natives who live there. Uh, there's a lot of great uh, unknown history about uh, Florida and uh, its, its uh, roots within the cattle uh, ranching uh, in, in the United States a lot of people don't know about. And uh, this book right here will tell you all about it. I'm uh, currently working on the uh, process of uh, getting where I can uh, carry these as, a, as one of my products. So uh, if you'd like to get a copy, just let me know. Uh, it's, uh, it's a nice, thick, hardback book, but there's a lot of great reading in there, a lot of great history. For those of you who are into doing shows, uh, this would be a great thing you could research as far as coming up with character ideas and, and uh, things like that. So uh, just let me know if you're interested in that. Great history. Uh, we, we Floridians are, are quite proud of our heritage as, as, as cow people. Um, on my fam in my family tree, uh, several generations back, um, people have been involved in, in the cattle industry, and um, some of them were pioneers that came down. And you know, as soon as Florida became a uh, United States territory, uh, my ancestors started coming down in there. So again, this is to me the Florida cow whip is part of my heritage, and I'm really honored to uh, to get to share that with you. So, uh, without any further ado, we're going to get into some uh, information about how it is we're going to go about making this whip. Okay, um, making a cow whip doesn't require a whole lot of equipment or tools. Uh, in fact, I can pack everything I need to make a whip in, in a small box and take it with me and uh, make a whip wherever I go. And it's uh, actually very simple. Uh, maybe not easy, but there's very few things you really need. One thing I suggest, first of all, is get this book. It's Ron Edwards' How to Make Whips. Uh, now this doesn't pertain to nylon, and there's really nothing in here about a Florida cow whip. But what there is in here is some great diagrams. You can learn how to make crackers, uh, poppers, uh, and also platting. Just basic platting diagrams, techniques, uh, even some advanced stuff. This is the book you need if you're if you're a person that's never really platted before. I would suggest that first you learn how to plat. And I'm not really focusing on that here in this DVD. Um, but what what I would say is get this book and uh, start out with the, uh, the four plat, master that, move on up to the six, to the eight, to the ten, to the twelve. That's how I learned to plat. Uh, when Richard Clark uh, started teaching me a little bit about making whips, that's really all he did. He showed me uh, a four plat, uh, gave me some instructions on you know where to drop my make my drops, and said practice. Add, add two strands. Go to a six plat. Go to an eight plat. Go to a ten. Go to a twelve. And basically, I was pretty much self-taught from there. I'd call him and ask him some questions, but that was the extent of my training. So get this book. It'll help you. Most obvious, you're going to need some paracord. Uh, this is cordless. This is tan. And uh, this is black. It has the core still in it. Either kind works. This is a little more aggravating because you've got to pull those, those uh, strands out of the middle of the, of the uh, paracord before you can use it. Um, it's, it's a little aggravating. It takes some time, but... It makes a good, decent whip. Uh, you can use it. Uh, this is 3 16 uh, sinker cord. This is what we use for loading the shot and the strands. You need to get some of that or something similar. You can use other things. Um, sometimes you can find paracord that the BBs will, will slip down into uh, fairly easy. It's hard to find it like that anymore. Of course, obviously, you need some BBs. 
Uh, I like to use the Daisy Quicksilver BBs. Uh, they seem to have the smoothest uh, shape. Uh, some of the other ones have these little burrs that want to catch on the fibers of the paracord or the sinker cord they're using. So I, I really like the Daisy brand. Uh, you'll need a lighter to uh, melt nylon for uh, attaching uh, these lacing needles. Uh, this is a Tandy Jumbo Permalock lacing needle. I believe it's uh, the size is I believe it's five sixteenths. In that area, it's it's, uh, it's a small thing, but it's actually called a jumbo. Uh, this, these things are very uh, handy. The, uh, another thing you need is either clothes pins or better a uh, hemostat for clamping your material. You know, when you get done, you can clamp it by your let your hands go free. These are very handy when we're doing the taper and twist. Now you'll see that uh, hemostat. Also, you're going to need a Tandy uh, fit or awl. It's very uh, not too expensive. This is for poking holes into the nylon that you're going to be using. This is for the tapered twist. It'll be uh, handy later on. And uh, you'll need a wood burning tool. This is for uh, uh, people usually use it for engraving onto wood. I use it basically like a hot knife. Uh, it melts nylon really well. It hurts real bad if you touch yourself with it. Now this one gets around 900 degrees. Um, finally, you're going to need something to measure it with. Just a plain old yardstick. It, it works wonders. I've got one that's metal because I broke so many of these wooden ones. And uh, this is the, the spare wooden one that uh, my son and I keep around while we're making whips. Um, so that's about everything that you're going to need to make a cow whip. Uh, again, you can take this thing anywhere you go. All, these, all this equipment here, all these things can go with you anywhere. Um, and you can make a whip virtually anywhere. You, you know, no matter who you are, right now you're sitting there, if you're, if you're somebody who lives in a big city somewhere, you can make one of these things. You know, if you live out on a ranch, you can make one. Um, you, you, know, you don't have to have a workshop. You just got an apartment. You, know, you can still make a cow whip. And uh, that's, that's the beauty of this whole thing. And that's, that's the one thing I wanted to, uh, to uh, bring out. Uh, during this this film, is uh, it's, you know anybody can do this if they just practice and uh, you know put in the effort and the time. Uh, you can make one. The very first thing we're going to do to make a whip is we got to make the keeper laces to actually tie the whip onto the handle. Because the Florida cow whip has a very unique design, unlike any other whip in the way that it's attached uh, to its handle. What you need to do is get a piece of paracord, cordless, um, four or five feet long, and you'll take a, one of the lacing needles that you have, a lighter, and put some heat to the end of the paracord, you make a little melted in there on the end of it, and you take your lacing needle and attach to it. Sometimes it's hard to get it started. This time it's going to work. Alright, I'll take and trim this little edge, with a little burr right there, I'll trim that off with a pair of scissors. Okay, then you take another piece of, of cord, a little longer than the first one, and both of these are cordless. They have been, rather they have had, they've had the core removed from them, it didn't start out cordless. Actually feed it back in to the other strand. Takes a little work, but what you're going to do is you're going to recore a piece of this stuff with another piece of paracord. Now, you could use just a regular piece of paracord like this, this cordless, or you could use some paracord that is, uh, or still has the core uh, within it. But I found that that is not uh, as durable as this method. This is the method that I was taught. And that way the, uh, the cowboys, no matter what they do to it, it's more than likely going to withstand it. Uh, whereas I have seen some whips before where it was, uh, the, the paracord that just has the normal filler strands had actually worn through and the filler strands are really the only thing holding the thing together. So this is just a little more of a durable way to be sure that, uh, you know, nine times out of ten, probably nothing will ever happen. But if, if this part ever breaks on the cow whip, uh, it's, it's pretty well finished. So I'm going to go ahead and continue to finish this up. You can do the same thing and just keep feeding it through. I usually like to have my, my keeper strands obsessively, just excessively long, and because uh, I like the way they look when they're tied on. And after we get it done, I'll show you what to do from there. 
All right, we've got it all the way through. Got it doubled up. Now, what you're going to do with this, just take, cut off this end here, toss it to the side, find the other end, cut it off where it's uh, still, where you have the two cords together right here at the end. And then take your lighter and just seal them up with the heat on the ends like this where they won't come undone. Alright, careful not to burn yourself. Now that we've got them sealed up, we have the heat put to them, the way that I secure the, the whip for I can, so I can plait is very simple. I'll just tie a knot like so, very simple knot like this. And then I hang or attach this to anything that can, that can withstand the weight and pressure of me pulling against it. And that is, this is the reason why I say that a cow whip can be made virtually by anyone, anywhere. Uh, you don't have to have a workshop or anything uh, like that. I made whips while I was on vacation at the beach when it was raining. I made whips at my in-law's uh, house before. Just found a, a hinge that was sticking out and, and hung one of these from it. This is the foundation for the whip. Uh, I don't use a vise for plaiting anything. Uh, everything I plait is always, uh, quote unquote, from a hook or from, you know, something being hung up in the air. Now, what I'm going to do here, and just to show you how easy it is, that you don't have to have any special tools or equipment, show you one of my favorite places to uh, plait from, and uh, I can find one of these anywhere I go. It's called a doorway. And all I do is I take this that I made, I open up the door, I throw it over the top, I shut the door, and I have a nice, solid, secure place from which I can plait. And uh, any more, uh, I don't even use my normal place where I used to make whips. I just come right here and flat right in here where I can be around everybody. And um, that's, that's all you got to do. So if you've got a doorway, uh, you can plait a whip. And so we're going to go from, uh, from this. We're going to show you how to make the belly, and you'll be on your way. Okay, the very first thing that you do uh, when you're going to make your belly is you got to have your, your shot strand if you're going to weight your whip. There's a variety of different ways to do this. Uh, my favorite way is always to be uh, to use BBs and uh, either a piece of paracord that you can actually get the BBs down into, which is kind of hard to find nowadays, or using this 3 16th of an inch uh, sinker cord works really well. Uh, for this particular project, we're going to have a two and a half foot strand of shot. This is the way we, I do this. Uh, insert an ink pen or something like a pencil down in the end of this. Take the lighter kind of roll it around over top of the lighter, put some heat there, and uh, I'm attempting to make a type of funnel, I guess you could say, where the BBs will go down in it and it won't fray out on the end as you as you work the BBs into it. There's a lot of ways people do this. Um, there's a lot of methods people use to weight their whips. This is the one I've used uh, for years. It works well for me. I take the BBs and while I'm sitting around watching television or something like that and I've got one of these to make I'll just sit there and feed them down in and uh, with a sinker cord they're really easy to, uh, to push down and I'll just sit there and just do them just like this um, now some folks over the years have emailed me and said hey you know a lot, know a lot faster way to do it you'll probably if you're in a hurry you'll probably come up with it but this is one of those things I just do while I'm relaxing so I've never gotten in a hurry and came up with you know ways to just ram them down in there a hundred at a time or anything like that uh, uh, this is just something I do again for while watching TV, relaxing, whatever, uh, reading something on the internet. Uh, it doesn't look like I'm doing it very fast, but after you get to doing it for a while, you can you can string them pretty quickly. Now, what I like to do at the end of the strand down here is I leave a little bit of this cord sticking out, I leave a little tail on the end of it, and I don't want these things to keep going down. So what I do is I kind of twist it like this and hold it and put some heat there at the end of it. Good thing about nylon is if you want it to stay or you want to do something, you just put a little heat to it and melt it a little bit and it'll stay that way. So what I do is just kind of use it, twist it, melt it a little bit, and that blocks up the end where the BBs won't uh, continue to uh, travel further down. And then as I, as I fill the BBs up to, to where I want it to be, my little bird over there won't be quiet. Um, he must like this. 
uh, what I do is I want to make sure these BBs are packed in tight. So I'll, as, I'm, as I'm working down, I'll make sure I'm getting all the slack out of it. Um, and, as, and after I actually get them completely filled up, I'll just work all the BBs down toward the end, get any slack there is. Be careful not to push with the sinker cord too hard because they'll actually stack up side by side in the sinker cord. Um, and it's, uh, you don't want that to happen. But uh, if you can find some paracord, 650 paracord, uh, that the BBs will slide down, it actually works, works really well. You don't have to worry about them trying to stack side by side. But again, I just push them down like that as I go, making sure that I'm getting them packed in there nice and tight because you don't want them to be kind of loose in there. Uh, you know, you want them to be packed together. But that's that. So we're going to go ahead and fill up two and a half feet. That'd be 30 inches of these uh, BBs within the sinker cord. And we'll continue on with the belly.